Let me get to uh, what the Panthers have done. And in the grand scheme of things, and I said this before, uh, I am not anti the moves they have made so far. The shiny object, of course, is the fact that Brian Burns goes for a second uh, and a fifth next year. And then there's, you know, nobody's talking about the big move of swapping fifth round picks, which gets you from 141 to 140. Uh, you know, just in front of the Giants in the fifth round this year. So that's an enormous move. Um, but, it, you know, when you look at it, they got they gave up more for Sam Darnold than they're getting for Brian Burns. I just I, – I, that's where I, what I can't square. I, I forgot about that. That's a, that's a really good one. I might steal that for a tweet. Take it. Um, yeah, I will. The, look, here, here's the thing. The – you know, we, we don't – I mean, the Panthers needed to come out aggressively if if, if, it's, if it wasn't true and say that, that the Rams offer the two first and the second was never out there. Uh, they haven't done that. And so it's led everybody, I mean, myself included, to believe and to understand that the Rams did, in fact, offer them that. And I think – you know, I, I know you – I think you quote tweeted my what I, what I tweeted out there. But, um, you know, look, this is a case of – sure does feel like the – same guy who told the Rams no thanks, or told, who right. told his front office to tell the Rams no thanks, is the same guy who allowed the relationship between the front office and basically David Tepper, in my opinion, yeah, was like, no, we're not trading him, and then came out and then was like, you know, he his relationship, he he basically said, I'm not paying Brian Burns thirty million dollars a year, and the relationship between Tepper. And the front office with Todd France, Brian Burns' agent, who has done a good job taking hardline stances. He did it with Dak Prescott and the Cowboys. Yep. Um, you know, like, and Burns himself deteriorated to the point that Tepper basically realized they were going to get nothing for I mean, they were going to get a third round compensatory pick at best, which is the end of the third round, if they didn't sign him or trade him this offseason. Because uh, he was just going to leave next offseason. It was we too prohibitive to tag him. And so, Ultimately, I think Tepper said, we're not paying him that. Go get the best offer you can get to Dan Morgan. And so now you make Dan Morgan look stupid because you wouldn't take the two first and you do take a second round pick, which, as you point out, is less than what you take for Steve Donald. I don't have a problem. And I told you when, when we were talking about Brian Burns being tagged, I thought he would be traded. I don't yeah. have a problem with trading Brian Burns. No, I do think I. It actually makes all the sense in the world because you were going to get a late third Again, at best, based on the compensatory formula, and then you know whoever you sign and all that, it's, just a, it's one more year down the road, too, by letting him walk next year. So getting something now is great, but it's just clear that this, front, this, this ownership group, and by extension the front office, because they do what, they, what the boss tells them to do, doesn't understand how to stay away from the football, being involved in the football aspect of things, and clearly doesn't have a good grasp on what – to do in terms of managing a team. I like that they went out and signed two offensive linemen, yep. two interior offensive linemen. To protect Bryce Young on the inside, it's going to make you quantity better on the left at left tackle. Like it's going to improve your offense, your offense, your offense as a whole for sure. But like you keep making these headline grabbing idiotic moves. Yeah, that, I mean the 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 problem, and again, it's hard to do this. But we know, and Joe Person from The Athletic is the one who confirmed all of this. He goes, he knows for a fact. Uh, and I thought it was two ones and a three, and then it's two ones and a two. I just can't, for the life of me, understand why for somebody who doesn't throw for 4,500 yards, uh, would you would decline that, who's not about to wear a Hall of Fame jacket. And I don't care what anybody's opinion is of Brian Burns today. He is not, you know ticketed for Canton. I just don't understand how that's not the easiest okay ever. Ever. Yeah, I mean a, I mean, a I mean, thousand quote, times in a I'm, row I would do that. I mean, I'll quote uh my buddy Franklin from from ATW when we were talking about the move yesterday on our text chat on our text thread, but he's like <laughs> who would turn down two first for any non quarterback? Right. Like I mean I mean like I mean maybe prime Aaron Donald you could justify it with or I maybe mean, like if somebody offers you two first round picks for any player that is not a franchise quarterback, you take it. it it's, In fact, and there's yeah. a lot of quarterbacks where you take it. If somebody offered, if somebody offered the Panthers two first for Bryce Young right now, you oh, probably they, take it. Go, yeah, absolutely, hundred percent. 
And again, well, no, would, no but, but smart teams would. I mean, right, that's true. No offense to Bryce Young. Uh, all right, I, I, we need to move off of that because it's one of those things that we could spend. He, every time I think about it, I get more angry at what. And I don't. And what I keep trying to tell people is that I am not a fan. I have no emotional tie to the organization. But what I do have an emotional tie to is teams that routinely do the wrong thing. Maybe I'm scarred by being a Jets fan for most of my life, for being a <laughs> Mets fan, for being a Knicks fan, right? I grew up, and I'm, I'm still a Mets fan. I could care less what the Knicks do or what the Jets do, but when teams do continuously do the wrong thing, it makes me angry, and the Panthers just, like, I like what they did. I like uh, Robert Hunt. I like Damian Lewis. I think those are really two really good additions. Yeah, Robert Hunt's a, Robert Hunt's a really good player, and that's like you know pay, spending in the in the in the in the interior on the interior offensive line is sort of an underrated thing. That is it like you know no everyone's talking about the Brian Burns trade. Nobody's talking about the Robert Hunt deal, right? And that's just because like guards, you know, the, by, buying interior offensive linemen isn't very sexy. But I mean, it, it, that's that's a smart move. Like the Panthers. Outside of not getting enough for Brian Burns and having it directly compared to the offer they had from the Rams, the Panthers have not had a bad offseason or a bad free agent. No, I, I like it. I, you know, I would have rather them kept Frankie Louvu, but that price tag is probably above and beyond where they wanted to go for somebody like that. Uh, so four starters: Yitor uh, Gross Mattis is now with San Francisco, uh, Burns in New York. Um, uh, Dante Jackson is going to sign somewhere. I don't think Dante Jackson is a tremendous loss, in my opinion. Um, and uh, Luvu. So four defensive starters are out. I trust the rest of that defense. Hopefully, J.C. Horn will be healthy. Uh, and now you got to go. And well, they're going to release Von Bell too. So uh, another important part of that defense is going to be out. Uh, but I I trust uh, Ijiro Ivero to uh, to put together a good defense. And now you got a little bit more draft capital, not a ton, uh, but you got two picks early in the second round, and those two early second day picks. I mean, if you want, you could parlay those into a first. A first, um, yeah. but I frankly, I think they need you bodies. Probably, you, you, well, and yeah, they need they need bodies for sure. You also, you know, I mean, you're saving some, you know, saving some money. You don't have to worry about you know sp- using the fifth year option. I mean, if you, the fifth year option is nice. But I mean, in reality, like if a player is good enough, um, you know, you sign him before the fifth year option becomes right. necessary to even utilize. And I think too, with this draft class and the Panthers' needs, and I wouldn't be surprised if they were in on Calvin Ridley. I'm not saying it'd be a good idea. I'm just saying it wouldn't be surprised right. if they were. Or, or you take one of those twos and you send it to Cincinnati for T. Higgins. I mean, that's not a bad idea either, right? Like, I, I think if you're, I think if you're Cincy, and you know, the Panthers offered you 39. Definitely, if they offered you 33 you would consider doing it because it, it does feel like things are, are – like the way that Cincy operates with the franchise tag, we've seen it, um, uh, you know, with uh, – they did it with uh, A.J. Green and uh, they recently did it with uh, the – I'm drawing a – Jesse Bates, the same right. thing signing in Atlanta. They, they let these guys play out these one-year tag deals and let them walk. And so if you're the Bengals – and you can get that high of a pick. Would you do it for T. Higgins, you know, local Clemson guy? I, mean, I, I don't think that's a terrible idea. But regardless, you know, this, if, if the Panthers don't do either of those routes with Ridley or Higgins, this draft class is so deep at wide receiver, it's insane. Right. And, you know, it's very, deep at, it's very deep on the offensive line as well. There's all these quarterbacks, right? I mean, as you know, people are like, well, there's nine or ten wide receivers who go in the first round. Well, I mean, there's only 32 picks. Right. <laughs> so there's a really good chance. There's a really good chance that like one or two of these wide receivers who are high quality players could flip to the second round. You have Jonathan Mingo, uh, you know, who you think is going to be a a pretty good player. Do we? Um, so I, okay. I, I mean, he's, he's a rookie, man. Like, I, he's a rookie in that system. I don't right, know, okay. Like, good yeah, point. I, yeah, good yeah, point. Like, I'm not. I'm not going to sweat anybody's performance in right. in whatever so the hell that, that was. That is last a year. very good point. I sometimes I forget. 
because Mingo mm-hmm. was so unimpressive. I forget that Bryce well, Young he, was he also threw, unimpressive. Threw him in the fire and I, too. Right. Yeah. And, I, and I'm giving Bryce Young the benefit of the doubt that it was more about the environment than anything else. So I'll give the same benefit of the doubt to Jonathan Mingo. Uh, I personally wouldn't waste any draft picks uh, on trading for veteran players. I, not a single one. Not not understanding that T. Higgins uh, is definitely available from Cincinnati, uh, but I would use all of my draft and, picks and, and to he, build he, my team. And he might, and, he, and look, he might, he might not be. And the reality is, you're not your team. Look, just, I'm playing devil's avocado with myself here, but like you, you know, you're not a team that's going to compete in the, you know, in in, in in the NFL in 2024, more than likely if you're the Panthers, right? I mean, you're, it's, it's very reasonable to expect that they're going to struggle again this coming season. T. Higgins is likely going to be a free agent. He'll be 26. You can go and, I mean, make him a monster offer, and he might be willing to come and play uh, in Carolina for, for the right amount of cash. Will Brinson is joining us here on the Adam Gold Show. All right, uh, real quick, Saquon Barkley to the Eagles. Other than Tiki Barber being upset, uh, which I think he was just sort of joking, uh, and I have no problem with it. Um, Saquon didn't take it that way. <laughs> well, he, yeah, he absolutely took it seriously. Which, whatever, I don't. It, they, <laughs> which probably portends that they didn't have a very good relationship anyway. Which right. would, which, which I guess would, I think, put Saquon Barkley in a long line of people that don't have a great relationship with Tiki Barber. He seems to be somewhat. Oddly enough, oddly enough, I have a great relationship with Tiki Barber. I've I've know. spoken I mean, with him several times, and I've liked him very much. He's incredibly honest. Uh, I don't know why he puts off, uh, you know, f- fellow athletes, but um, my, I still think that Philadelphia. I don't understand what Philadelphia is doing. I mean, I, didn't they have a running back who was at least as good as him just now? Um, yeah, they had DeAndre Swift. To um, what is DeAndre? DeAndre Swift he went to Chicago. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's 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 been a wild. It's been like the craziest running back market ever. I mean, they just yeah, traded Aaron for Jones. him, and then now they let him walk. And now, and like yeah. I don't know, maybe they saved some money with uh, with Saquon Barkley, who at least can catch the well, ball I mean, out of the backfield. I don't. I mean, like we, I don't think we've seen the, the full blown um, contract and financials on Saquon, but I mean, it's like twelve million a year, which is you know it's, it's a lot, but I mean that's probably a lot of funny money in yeah. there. And I, I, I think you can make the case that you know Saquon, um, obviously taking him at two is a terrible idea. But yes. like, as a player, as it was like, as a, just as a player, when he's healthy, man, he right. is when, incredible. When he's yeah, healthy, when he's healthy. But I mean, like, if, if you're in the Eagles, you believe you can keep him healthy, and you can, you know, operate like you believe your analytics and your approach to you, you know player usage and running back usage gets the most out of guys. And we've seen it; like, they got the most out of DeAndre Swift. Uh, they got the most out of Miles Sanders under Nick Sirianni. If they get the most out of Saquon Barkley, then that can end up being a pretty decent signing. I, I'm not in the. I'm not in the. The mode of like paying running backs in free agency, though that's just not my thing. No, I the the draft the running back in the fifth round, you're probably just as good. Uh, and the Eagles... I do I do want Derrick Henry to get signed by the Ravens. That would be fun. Derrick Henry <laughs> and Lamar Jackson together, <laughs> a dream, an absolute <laughs> dream and a nightmare for defenders. A uh, nightmare for defenders, and at least somebody the Ravens can, I believe, even uh, in his advanced age. Uh, count on uh, to be healthy, which you can't say about any of their running backs over the last I don't know how many years. Seems like every year they lose all of their running backs to season-ending injuries. Will Will Brinson, senior NFL writer, CBSSports.com. My friend, I appreciate your time. I'll talk to you soon. Hey, buddy. See you, man. You got it.